uh, welcome back welcome back today and uh, we are starting this show with a bit of a screen share and uh, yeah it's here Oh, I'm struggling to find the right screen share. Got it. You get all right, fine. It's been nicely laundered for you, though, I see. <laughs> Enjoy. Tony Pinto. So listen in.
yeah it's very tempting to go on with that lovely music uh, and i just couldn't stop myself but today with me we have the one and only and the great virtuoso tony pinto none other who to my generation is someone who we have not appreciated enough so i took this opportunity of inviting tony to doing a live session with me to talk about his background and you know the 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 great achievements he has had if you watch that video i think the ending is fascinating i'll put the link somewhere somewhere down uh, somewhere down and share it with you but uh, it's it's fascinating the response his music gets and people in canada just can't believe how good he is on the keyboard tony over to you tell us thank something you. tell us something thank about you. yeah about your your legendary times i know that's a very broad question but the story starts in bombay doesn't it yeah i started at the age of 5 my father taught me the violin because he was a violinist and uh, so i was playing the violin and i used to play for orchestras and go enter competitions and all that and then uh, at the age of 12 he put me on the piano because he said you got small fingers so maybe by stretching and all they might get become longer anyway so nothing happened like that but i was playing classical music because he put me with a classical teacher and i was learning classics and also he used to play with me the violin sometimes when we were free and show me all the overtures selections marches etc what they play in orchestra so i could get an experience of it and uh, fortunately at the age of uh, 15 whilst i was still in high school i got an opportunity on the 31st of december to play for the 31st dance with a band which i never knew or never even heard of but what happened was one of the musicians from the band knew my dad since he had a band shop in bombay and they always to play in his band sometimes for gigs etc so they told him he said you know we have a show tomorrow but we can't get a pianist so he told them he says i know a boy he says in bandra who plays the piano i'll see if he's free <laughs> and next night we both turn up to the place where we were performing and you should have seen the look on the musician's face when they saw my dad with me <laughs> and they said master why didn't you tell us that it was your son <laughs> so that is that was my first gig right right no you know uh see when i when when i first heard your music rendering konkani konkani songs in a very unusual manner and very charming manner for francis rodriguez's book that was the first time i encountered your music but unfortunately our generation uh because of the gap i just realized you 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 started playing in the 50s when i was not yet born and uh you know because of the gap because of the the limitations of uh, music getting across we we have not done justice to people like your reputation uh but when i actually read it uh, in in this book which uh, which uh, you know was edited by the late mario cabrali sa who recently passed yes yes yeah and uh, maybe i should screen share so yeah so so you know when i saw when i saw what uh, what the sports journalist mario rodriguez has written had written about you i was just totally blown you know where he talks about you as a virtuoso jazz pianist uh, who has you know studied with your father as you said but not just that then along the way uh, you take to piano at the age of 12 okay and then you start sitting in with bands like johnny baptist goody servai uh, ken mack pete de mello you know and uh, your influences go to you know some of the greats like oscar peterson errol gardner gardner dave brubeck and all those kind of uh, you know legendary names yeah. apart from that uh in 1958 you formed your own quartet and uh, took over at the ambassador hotel form another piano virtuoso who is dizzy sal whose name we have That's heard right. a lot whose name That's we have right. heard a lot you know and and of course it goes on so i i will not interrupt but i'll let you tell the story you know so the point the only point i was making was that uh, sorry sorry what was that uh, 
you know all these great achievements and uh, the kind of uh, reputation you have we risk forgetting it so it's important for people like you to tell your story to write it down one day uh, you, you mentioned the high points uh, of your career was playing with certain of the jazz greats in the world jamming up with them tell us yes that's right tell us a bit about that uh well when i was at the ambassadors we were there for 16 years and uh, during that time we had a lot of foreign musicians and all this used come to bombay to give shows and all that like jack t garden sextet louis armstrong dave brubeck quartet and uh, the duke ellington big band and so these musicians in the nights when they were off they used to come around to these night clubs where there were bands and jam out so i had the opportunity of uh, jamming out with eddie calvert the english trumpeter and uh, some musicians from the duke ellington band namely johnny hodges jimmy hamilton and uh, some mm-hmm. boys from the jack t garden band like jerry fuller uh, don pulse and the drummer i forget his name so we used to have sessions in the night from about 11:30 to 12 or something because we used to play till 12:30 sometimes we used to go on till 1 so seeing once some of our jazz fans whom we had regular lovers of jazz brought in dave brubeck to hear my quartet one afternoon and uh, he heard us for about 15 20 minutes and all and he came and patted me on the back and in the thing he went away because he had to go across to the cci he was giving a concert there that night and they were pre- preparing a dome like stage you know for the sound effects and all that so he had to go and check that uh, stage etc so that was one of the thrilling moments for me to play in front of a giant like that i felt like an ant in front of, <laughs> front of an elephant so anyway that was that yeah and, and uh, sorry sorry yeah go on uh, you know i i i also came while doing a bit of a search i came across this poster which uh, it's 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 a poster from the 50s if i'm not mistaken from for the ambassador hotel yeah and i think it's uh, yeah it's on the web uh, on an article written by naresh fernandez who does a lot of justice to go and musicians in bombay and uh, you know it 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 is it is almost like 60 70 years back amazing amazing tell us about <laughs> your memories from that from those times from which times ambassador days yeah as i told you we were there for 16 years we were playing we used to play cabarets and for dancing and all that and uh, it was really like a second home to us because our boss jack boyans is who passed away at the age of 66 was a fabulous boss and you know he sort of uh, always when he used to get cabaret artists and all this the first question they asked was how's your band and he always used to say my band is the best band in bombay <laughs> and uh, every year the rotterdam ship the holland america line ship used to come to bombay and is to Uh, sing be in port for a week so they had a lot of cabaret artists on the ship performing so the taj used to try and catch as many artists from there to get to perform at the taj and he used to go and get just one artist so for one week uh, the sing once or twice i think we had the great org- organist ethel smith who performed in bathing beauty so she came and performed at the ambassador for that week that they were there of course she there was no organ but she was draped in a beautiful silk sari sat on a bar stool with a guitar and she played and sang and the crowd was mad for the sing oh the way she you know sang and played so she was there for a week and then the following year there was another cabaret artist couple so the same question how's your band and my boss told him told them the same thing and so the funny part is that these cabaret artists used to come in the morning they used to check in into the hotel evening we used to have a rehearsal and night the floor show is to go on so this couple came in in the evening we had a rehearsal from 6 to 
And I went through all the music that he was giving out one after another. And I saw the what it was and what the tunes and everything. And I gave him the music back. I said, I, it's okay. I know this is singing. So he told me, he says, um, if you give me the music of the last one back, I'll have to shoot myself. And I was wondering what this guy is going to come out with. And what do you know? He comes out with an abra, uh, aria sorry, from the opera Barber of Seville, Figaro. And uh, the piano part has three lines. You know, the first line has the lyrics in Italian. And the next two lines are the piano singing accompaniment. So I told him, I said, uh, let me go through it once with the band, with our quartet. And uh, let's see how it is. So we tried it very slowly so that I could get a hang of what is happening because I had to follow the words, you know, in Italian. So we did it once and then we tried it a second time. I was a little more comfortable with what is happening. And then the third time I told him, I said, OK, now you take it at the tempo at which you are comfortable. And we ran through it and we the sing, uh, did the rehearsal. Everything was OK. Then. In the night when I was uh, talking to the receptionist, he told me, he says, you know, Tony, he says, um, after the rehearsal, this uh, guy came out with the boss, with Jack, and he was talking here near the reception. And he said, um, you know something? He told the boss, on the ship, I've been rehearsing this number with the band for one week, and they still can't get it right. So seeing my boss says, I told you my bond is the best bond, you know, and he laughed at me. So, I mean, in other words, that was a, a feather in our cap, you can say, because uh, I've never played opera. And the first time I had to tackle something like that. But we played different kinds of cabarets. We played uh, belly dancing music and Spanish pasodobles and this, whatever the cabaret art is, all different kinds. So that was a very good experience. And, you know, meeting different kinds of people, knowing what their uh, ways and their art and everything was. So that was a great experience for me. Tony, the owner of uh, the ambassador was from which country at that time? He was a Greek. Greek. Jack Greek. Amba uh, Jack Boyanzis. Okay. Okay. If if you had to break up your career into its different parts, you know, the highs and the lows, uh, how would you look back and uh, see? Yeah, of course, your ambassador days are one important segment of it. But what about the rest? I know you traveled on ship, you backed up a Bollywood artist and all those kind of things. Could you break up your career into its parts? First of all, uh, the thing, Fred, I, as I said, I started playing at the age of 15 when I was in high school. Right through my schooling days, I, I played in the bands and then on to the, I went to college, to St. Xavier's College and I graduated in economics and politics. Now, all this I was uh, playing in the night and studying by day. And after I finished with the ambassadors, see, I joined Bollywood. So there it was like a full-time job, you know, you had to go, we had, whenever we had recordings, morning, afternoon, or sometimes a song followed by a background, seven hour shift, we had to go that. And uh, I used to sometimes play the whole day there in the studios. And then I used to leave the studios and go to the Ambassador Hotel to complete the night shift, what I used to play till 12.30 or 1. This is 60s or 70s? Uh, from 60s onwards, till okay. the time I finished at the Ambassadors. In, we finished in 74. And even after that, when I finished, I was uh, full-time after with the studios. And besides, I used to give a lot of tuitions. I've taught a lot of students, many professional musicians, pr many musicians' son and, uh, who were working with me, who you knew me and others, non-Catholics and everything. So I had a lot of students, even coming from outside Bombay. And after that, uh, besides uh, Ambassador Bollywood, you, you were touring on board the ship? Uh, that was in 68. I had an offer to go on the SS Uganda. It was a British India ship. So I was playing with a quartet there as a pianist and um, we visited about 55 countries in one year wow. because every trip used to be a fortnight trip. And so we've practically seen so many countries and so many things. And sometimes we used to get people from different ports sometimes coming in and, you know, jamming in or we used to go out to ports to 
these nightclubs or something and whenever whenever we were free and jam out with them and so that was also another thing and then uh, recently in um, uh, 2003 i had an offer to go on the holland america line the ms zaida dam so there i was playing with a trio and we were playing nightly so we did that for three and a half months tony uh, who were your contemporaries in uh, bombay music both goans and non goans others uh you see we had a lot of uh, sing, uh, musicians th- those days you know as right. i told you john right. johnny baptist chick chocolate uh johnny gomes joe gomes and uh, uh, frank farnan rudy cotton leslie goodino bras gonzalez so many other musicians terrific musicians you know and it was really great fun jamming out playing with them and i we, it was really an exciting time for musicians and lot of work for musicians because practically every night club had a three piece four piece band playing so musicians were all the time some of them worked in the daytime in an office and night they used to play with a group in some hotel or something so music was going on in uh, full swing and is it true that prohibition changed this all prohibition i beg your pardon is it true that prohibition you know uh, yes yes yeah. yes when prohibition came in here that that was a big blow that was a big blow to the musicians and all so as i said fortunately the private gigs and all were going going on like uh, the same weddings and all that so that the, they couldn't stop so that was the way musicians used to play and get get some earnings from there yeah and uh, you 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 were part of uh, the bandra circuit or what the bandra you were you were in bandra where were you based in bombay yeah i was living in bandra uh, on peri road okay okay what yeah, was the music the... scene music scene there oh my god it was terrific because you have a lot it was pre- predominantly a catholic uh, place and lot of uh, sing people interested learning music playing music lot of musicians from bandra you know east indians and goans and all who are playing in bands and all that so it was a really sing fantastic place i used to play for the school choir and the our church choir st andrews i used to play the violin school the meaning st stanislaus or yes i was in st stanislaus i see i see and uh, something about uh, your experiences with bollywood <laughs> you see in initially whenever there was a solo in an interlude in the song they used to call me they used to tell the messenger tony pinto ko bola and uh, i used to go and play the song so slowly slowly sort of word got around you know about my playing and all that and that's how i slowly slowly started getting the recordings here there you know? and uh, with the, the thing that i have nearly i played with nearly all the best music directors and especially for a long time i worked with lakshmikant parallel where we played uh, scene in movies like shole bobby of raj kapoor and you know so many other roti kapda makan lot of other uh, scene pictures and all all the mu- movies they wherever there's a song interlude uh, i played played those all see uh of course your your uh, experience with konkani music rendering it in a in a totally different shape is pretty amazing so maybe before we start that i can just look for a minute or two at uh, one of your konkani konkani uh, medleys here which is from the website of jazz goa colin colin de cruz yes yes and right. others so yeah we'll just start it here
it's 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 amazing tony uh, what you do is just magic uh, let us into the magic i mean you are rendering it in such a you know charming way that it's absolute magic thank you thank you so so i mean like uh, what effects are you adding to it excuse my ignorance but are you rendering it in a jazz style or or what is it exactly uh, well i wanted to give it a different uh, kind of a this you know to touch because just I, because in the original movie i played the piano for that song claudia really really <laughs> this is this is in uh, in the 50s or 60s whenever i don't remember okay. Okay. because okay. i played for both the pictures of uh, frank one and i see nirmon and amjan oshib wow man so here you are rendering it differently yes just to give it a different kind of a coloring and a different wow. uh, this you know from the usual uh, this that people have heard a few days back our friend uh, mozin minizes whom i noticed from the whatsapp groups that you also knew uh, I, i i didn't know him i cannot claim to have known him i was his fan as a in the 80s as a as a college kid and uh, i used to listen to his uh, bollywood renderings of uh, on the piano and it was so amazing uh, you knew uh, you knew mozin i knew him very well because uh, i met him in bombay when <coughs> excuse me when he was playing at the volga volgas with uh, george pacheco quartet and so i used to go there sometimes to listen to the band and all and then he used to call me tony come on jam play a couple of numbers and over the the singer time i got to be quite friendly with him and all and we are very good friends i see uh then of course another phase of your career was shifting over to canada was it a big decision was it good for the, for your music or did you feel that uh... well the the same thing is this uh, fred uh, you see all my children had migrated to different parts australia canada so it was just my wife and myself back so our youngest daughter margaret who is here she says uh, dad mom what are you all doing there all alone why don't you all come for a holiday so we came for a holiday first she said bring all your papers and she put them out to the singh wherever they had to be sent and you won't believe it for the time that we were here we had our medicals here and now the singh uh, this that we're supposed to do interview it was waived because both my wife and i were graduates my wife is a uh, professor in science she's an msc so she was teaching in a college in bombay for 33 years wow. so the uh, by virtue of the fact that we are graduates now they waived the interview and our medical was done here which was never done before we had to go back to the place from where you come and you do the medical there then uh, the following year in a year see we had our uh, see visa to enter the country and ever since 61 uh, sorry 2001 we been here in canada what's what's your take on goan music konkani music uh, what do you think it needs at the moment what direction is it moving in is it getting better or is it not doing as well as it did in the 50s 60s what you see the the singer fred <coughs> excuse me the thing is this that uh, you know like in bollywood rd burman changed the whole uh, this of uh, indian music you know the, the movie songs you know similarly in our goan this in chris perry has done a fantastic job you know of changing the whole color and the thing with his composition beautiful this thing and the way he has rendered them you know so that has changed the whole face of music and uh, that is what is really needed you know fresh blood into the music so you are saying that uh, chris perry did it then but uh, now it's it's hard for someone to be another chris perry because he is such a large larger than life personality and his contribution is so vast in that sense yes yes i mean he has really contributed to konkani music in a very very big mm. way because mm. uh, before that you know it was very bland music it was like a curry without the proper spices today it's so, world class in that sense in some ways i i must tell you about this german uh, you know sound recordist called sigrid pfeffer who actually came to goa and fell in love with konkani music and created uh, you know got permission from the 
record labels and created a CD which he sold in Europe and things like that. So, like it's it's attracting attention, but not enough, probably not enough, not enough. Uh, as far as you go, Tony, what are your next big projects? Because there is still too much in you to let go or to give up. Now, all the skill, all the talent is still there. So, what are your big projects? I beg pardon. What what are your big pro, what are your planned projects? Anything on the cards or? <laughs> Uh, Fred, I'm 86 now. <laughs> so 80, 86 is the new 66. So don't worry. I know, I know. But uh, nothing. You know, at the same at the moment, uh, I just uh, what do you call it? Just want to play music and be happy, and make uh, others happy. Whoever listen to us, you know. that's mm -hmm. it. What else can you do at this age? I mean, that you know, oomph that you had at, the, at a younger age to do something and go forward, you know. That is uh, <laughs> never sorry, say sorry. die. Never say die because you know, yeah, as long as yeah, yeah there, there is always the spirit. So it can you can make things happen. If you look back, who are the greats in music who inspired you, particularly you know from Goa, but from the rest of the world also? Uh, inspired me in what way? Who you look up to? The great musicians who 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 you look up to? Ah uh -huh, yes, uh, the thing as I said. Um, we we had a lot of these foreign musicians uh, visiting India because we used to have the jazz yatra every two years, and all the great names like uh, Sonny Rollins, Max Roach, Clark Terry, and you know a lot of other musicians and you know, all came came for the festival. So we used to go for the festival and, and listening to them. You know, it was a great uh, thing way of learning and uh, editing, improving ourselves. Also. Uh, I would name my favorites like uh, when I was learning Errol Garner, Josh Shearing, Oscar Peterson, and uh, many others whom I look up to with great awe and respect because the way they played and the way they have seen, uh, you know, changed the face of music of jazz is phenomenal. You took part in two jazz yatras yourself, right? Yes, that's right. What was the experience uh, like? The, uh, the one in 84 was with a big band. And uh, the, it was uh, this thing led by Joe, uh, Joe Pereira. And that was at the Brabourne Stadium, you know, the open air, this thing there. We, yeah. we played uh, this thing. We opened the uh, Yatra. And then the second one was in 86, where we formed a sextet. Because Niranjan Javeri, the organizer of these Yatras, told me, he says, Tony, he says, uh, we want you to open up the yatra you, have, you know you have to have a home band and so we got all six uh, good goan musicians uh, the late joe Pereira, uh, george fernandez who played for my compositions also at the sound of surprise johnny rodericks uh, and who was uh, and at the singer tony was on bass guitar Frank uh, Franco was on drums and myself on piano. And we called it the Goa 86 uh, wow. Sextet. Uh, you you got a scholarship to study music in the US apart from other things. Uh, but who would you rate as your greatest music teachers or the ones uh, you learned from the most? I didn't learn jazz from anybody because it was just by listening to records and buying books, you know, getting books from the States and learning from them. And as I said, when foreign musicians came down, sitting down and having little discussions with them about music and whatever, harmony, etc. That's the way the other thing I learned. And with my classical background, that was a big uh, help, you know, the classical background that I had. But uh, more than that, it is just a lot of practice. As they say, uh, inspiration, uh, thing, uh, as they say, 1% one, 1 uh, inspiration and 99% perspiration. So it was that that way of, uh, you know, work, work a lot and sort of try and get my act together. Polydor Blues was your composition. Yeah, that's right. What inspired you to making it? Uh, see, I was uh, invited to do make a record with uh, Polydor. So obviously I wanted to, you know, make something or compose a number that would be a kind of a, emblem for them and at the same time a remembrance for me so i composed that number polydor blues and um, 
I had a sextet, I think, playing for the recording. And that was it. We did about four numbers, three on one side and one on the other side. I played my competition, uh, composition that won the prize also. Wow. And uh, that was, <laughs> it sold quite well in Bombay at that time. Last question. Uh, if people want to listen to your music, uh, your YouTube channel is there. What else? Uh, see, that's the only channel I have, you know, this, you know Tony on Pinto, YouTube. Tony Pinto, if, if they go to Tony Pinto Jazz Pianist. Okay. Just Google for that. Thanks so much, Tony, for your time. It's 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 just uh, amazing to to get to know you. Thank, thank you, you for very sharing. much, Fred. It thank was you. A for, pleasure. Thank you for sharing and thank you for taking time off. It's amazing. I think people like you have a story to tell, and you need to document it. I'm sure your scrapbook must be filled with memories and uh, you know uh, record labels and and uh, advertisements and wherever you played. So. <laughs> Please capture it for us for the coming generations before 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 we, we you know everything becomes a haze. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Real pleasure. Bye and good night. Bye. God bless.